This is where you become really impactful. This is where you become really efficient because now you are no longer doing this. You are advising this group on how to be better in assessing their third parties for the organization, right? Right. Hey, welcome. Brian Hoagley with Side Channel. How you doing? Another episode, I think we're at number five. This is good. So, I wanna continue the discussion around third party risk management, vendor management, third partying, whatever it is you wanna call it. You gotta ask yourself, do I have the capability to even look at my vendors after I start allowing them access to my organization? You know, can I do anything before I jump into the assessments component of what it is that I'm, I'm here to do as a CISO, security director, whatever your role is. And I think one of the, the great things to do is, again, looking at the NIST controls and taking all of them out and, and structuring a way to say, hey, what are the ones that are gonna mean the most to me when I am looking at building out the controls that I need for my own organization, my own program? These are the ones where you say, hey, look, here's who I am. Okay, here's my program, here's my org, okay? I have a number of third parties that are providing me services. Maybe they have some type of data access into my organization, right? And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what am I gonna do about, about assessing these, or, uh, these vendors and whatnot? That, that's great. That's, that's what the other two videos were really about was, what am I doing around this group, right? About these, okay? Remember, we went over, are they tier one? Are they tier two? Do they have, you know, a little uh, value? Do they have a lot of value to the organization, right? This is good. But what we're trying to figure out, really, with looking at these controls are, what is it that this part of the organization, me, right, as the assessor, the capabilities that I have, This is what's going to eventually drive down into you, the CISO or the security organization, whatever it is, to then inform either HR, maybe your contracting is done through HR, maybe you're informing legal, okay, maybe they're handling your third parties, or most notably, it's your sourcing group, okay, sourcing or contracting. And what you're looking to do here when you're assessing these is informing this group, one of these groups here, to figure out how do I best position you to be successful with staying within our risk tolerance that's been determined by the organization, right? This is where you come in. Uh, I'm not a big fan of doing and having third-party vendor risk management happen within the CISO space. Uh, this seems like a bit of a waste of time for the security organization. Um, I think a better position is to take the information that you want to see gathered from third parties, whatever it is, and empower your sourcing group, empower your legal team, your HR team, so that when they're out there asking the questions that they're going to ask anyway as part of the contract, right? They are asking their questions, very relevant things, limits of liability, components. You want to in, in, kind of infuse into that the security questions. This is where you become really impactful. This is where you become really efficient because now you are no longer doing this. You are advising this group on how to be better in assessing their third parties for the organization, right? That being said, when you look at the controls that we have in place, again, we've established risk tolerance, right? We've, we've gotten into some level of it being clearly de de determined, expressed within the organization, processes that are established around adhering to that risk tolerance. But then the things that we wanna get into deeper than that, right? Remote access is managed, right? We've got uh, third parties are responsible uh, in understanding what uh, it is that they have to do to adhere to uh, an organization's, uh, your organization's security policy, 
right? Uh, the activities are monitored, right? These are these are the huge components when you look at it and you're like, hey, um, am I just monitoring my employees' remote access? Do I treat, you know, when somebody's going into my org and they're coming in via VPN, you know, do I know if it's an employee? Do I know if it's a vendor? Or am I not sure really who it is, right? And when they do come into your organization, whatever it is that they do, if it's a contractor or employee, right? Can you monitor what they're doing? Can you actually associate their traffic back to the contract, back to the vendor? Uh, this is important, right? And it's, it's an overlooked thing. It's you, you, you honestly need to treat your contractors, your vendors, a little different than your employees. Their loyalties and such are a little, little different. They're not aligned exactly to the way that your employees are. We'll get into insider threat uh, at a later point to really determine whether or not some employees are aligned with uh, what it is that you want within your organization, but that's for, uh, that's for another day. Um, NIST has introduced uh, these controls right here um, in the new NIST uh, CSF version 1.1, and these are all dealing with supply chain. Uh, they were uh, smart enough, as uh, I believe they are a good group, to be able to um, figure out and say, hey, uh, supply chain is a uh, large enough risk. Oops, we're going through our uh, slightly unhappy guy. We'll make him happy. A uh, little Bob Ross action there. Um, this group right here, these are all now net new controls within the NIST CSF version 1.1. Um, and again, they're going over specific supply chain risks, right? Does, uh, do the processes within your supply chain risk management, have they been identified and established? Uh, your suppliers, uh, information systems components, are they identified and prioritized? Kind of like your other assets. If you think back to, you know, um, the identity, uh, asset management, uh, controls, Right? Uh, are they routinely assessed uh, using audits and response recovery planning conducted uh, with them? Looking at these at first glance, you're like, great, I need to apply these to all my third parties. What you really need to figure out before you can even start doing that is, are you capable of performing any of these functions first within your organization? I wouldn't just jump out and start asking my vendors if they adhere to these controls. I would start with my own organization and ask them, hey, do I have the ability to be able to successfully uh, uh, go through these controls and enforce them when it comes to the point or create a program around them, really whatever it is. Uh, this is uh, the box that uh, you know ends up getting set up in here is your own programmatics around GRC. It's around your, uh, your CERT, your incident response teams, your monitoring. Right, it's uh, it's it's got some flow right up to your enterprise risk management, right? Uh, this is really key when you start talking about feeding into your HR, your legal, uh, and your um, your sourcing groups or your contracting groups. Uh, this information that you're gleaning out of what you're seeing going on with your third parties. Right? Oh, you've got all your data that's happening down here, all your bits and your bytes. All of this is feeding up right, into these organizations. You as the CISO or the IT director uh, you know, or for security, whatever your role is, it, it, it's on you to inform this enterprise risk group and uh, you know of what the risk is to the organization. Maybe you're also just feeding this information directly, but in any, in any regard, this is still constitutes an enterprise risk because third-party vendor management is not a security issue by itself. It is an organizational issue, and it should be treated as such. Listen, I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, you know, uh, I hope you check out the hashtag CISOLife on YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, you'll find out all the other uh, con uh, the other videos that are out there, and uh, you know uh, I'm glad we're doing these. Uh, I've gotten some great feedback from all of you that they're informative. Um, I think the next step is we're going to start digging into some of the individual controls, and I hope that's worthwhile for uh, for everyone. Again, drop me a line, at Brian at sidechannel.com. Check us out online, LinkedIn, and YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.